Thanks for stopping by today. I'm Leah, founder of Sew Crafty Notions. Hey, stick around because today I'm going to teach you how to hand sew a buttonhole and I wouldn't want you to miss out. Hi, welcome back. So like I said, today I'm going to teach you how to hand sew a buttonhole. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and then make sure you subscribe to my channel because I don't want you to miss any of my upcoming tutorials. You can also visit my website at SewCraftyNotions.com where you can buy really cool sewing, crafting tools, and other useful things to help you sew and craft better. Okay, let's go and sew a buttonhole. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to hand sew a buttonhole. And some of the things that you might want to gather um, are... I use this uh, thread wax and it's basically it's just beeswax in a container and you just it has these holes in it and you just run the thread through like so and it coats it so that your thread doesn't um, knot up on you and get stuck when you're doing buttonholes is something that you want to probably want to use some of this. It'll make it a lot easier. Also, I have some fray check here. It isn't a necessity, but it's nice to have on hand, especially if, because we're going to cut a hole in our material for the buttonhole. And um, it, this material, especially that I'm demoing with, it's a, it's a little piece of flannel and it's going to fray out a little bit. So um, I have some fray check here, which I may or may not use, but something for you to keep in mind. Um, some people like to use chalk to mark their line with. I have this Mark Be Gone Disappearing Ink Pen, which I'll probably use that. And um, of course you'll need some scissors and your button. You need to decide on whatever size button you're using for your project. And we're gonna measure our button so I'm going to use this little ruler. So the first thing we're going to do is um, measure the button. I'm going to use this snowflake one since it's January. Even though I live in Florida and it's 85 today, we're going to use the snowflake button. So I'm going to measure the longest part of the button. And it's just right under one and a quarter inches. So um, I'm going to make my line that I'm going to draw and then cut for the buttonhole just a little bit longer than that, maybe even close to a quarter of an inch longer because I don't, I want to make sure that this button is going to be able to go in and out and it's kind of an odd shape anyways. You don't want to get hung up on a buttonhole that's too small. So um, I'm going to go ahead and cut. I mean, uh, I'm going to measure out my line about one and a half. That's probably just about right. You can see it's just a little bit, I should do it on this side, it's just a little bit longer on either side of the longest point of my button and that way I know that I'm gonna have plenty of room. I could probably make it a little bit shorter and we, we'd be fine. So just use your discretion because you don't, whatever project you're using, you don't want to not be able to get your button in and out easily. That is really frustrating. So of course I have some scissors here and I'm just using this, like I said, a little piece of scrap flannel for today. But most projects that you work on, they're going to have, especially if you're doing a buttonhole, you, you're probably going to be putting it on a garment that already has an interfacing in between two pieces of material. So you'll have plenty of stability there. Today I'm just using this little piece of flannel. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my line so we can get started on hand sewing this buttonhole. Okay, I have my line marked. Now what I like to do is, um, I like to mark a, a line on the end so I know I'm not going past this spot. Now what I like to do is, and for this demonstration, I'm going to make my stitches 
wider this way than I would normally do it so it's easier for you to see. So I'm going to go ahead and make this line on the end the length of the stitches because we're going to cut this open and I'm going to come from the underneath through there and we're going to sew one side at a time. But like I said, I'm going to make my stitches really wide so they're easy for you to see. But normally I would probably only go about that far. And some people like to put their stitches really close together. Today I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put my stitches further apart so it's easier for you to see how to make the buttonhole stitch that we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and um, wax my thread up knot it and get ready to go. Okay, so I've double knotted my thread. I'm going to run it through this beeswax one more time just so you can see it's not hard to do. I'm just holding this side with my thumb to put a little pressure on it so it gets plenty on there. And we're done. Okay, so you can see you can see the beeswax on the thread and it basically it's just conditioning that thread so that it's not going to get stuck on itself. So our next step is I am going to, to cut this open, this buttonhole line open. So usually what I like to do is I fold it in half like this. Make sure your ends are lined up so you don't have a wonky hole. And I just clip a, a hole like that and then I open it and you can see I have a little hole right there and then I'm gonna just only clip on the line down to the that end marker line don't go past it do the same for the other side okay now we can start buttonhole stitching our um, buttonhole. So I'm going to put my base stitch in over here on the side. You can even just put it in there in that end marker line if you want. I'm going to come up. I'm going to go down. Down to this end line and I'm going to come up again. Right next to this stitch where I just started. And I'm just using a, a regular needle, a kind of long one, so you guys can see it's not anything special. I forgot to tell you that. So when I come up, I'm gonna make sure that this thread goes behind that needle and down underneath of the bottom. And just pull the thread that's at the end of the needle down like so. So this is completely wrapped around there. You can see that, right? Now I'm going to come up a little bit and wrap that around there again. So basically I'm just making sure that I have gone completely around that needle because we want to make sure to secure that line, the thread when we start. So I'm going to pull up and like I said the stitches are going to be big, bigger than normal and the thread went right through there nice and smooth because I put that beeswax on. So what I did was it's making this little knot on the top that if you look at most buttonholes that are manufacturer made they have that on the top. And like I said most people they would go right next to that stitch and do the same thing and come right back up. But for the sake of being able to see clearly what I'm doing, I'm going over and going in and coming up through that hole where the buttonhole is and I'm making sure that my thread is on this side of the needle. Now I'm going to just pull up. I'm not going to go all the way around again. I'm just going to pull up. Now 
Now you can see where that thread is kind of, uh, the material is kind of fraying and it was getting in the way a little bit of when I was stitching. This is why you want to use some fray check. But if you use the fray check, you have to stop working on your project until it's dry a little bit. That's the only reason why I wasn't going to use it today. So for the sake of being able to go ahead and finish working on this project, I'm not going to put it on there. But you would cut it, put your fray check on there, and let it sit for a little while and dry, and then you can go ahead and work on your project again. So you just have to allow a little bit of drying time if you use that. So I'm going to go ahead and can continue on down this line, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm holding this thread here, and I'm going to start down here and go under and come up right at that buttonhole. Wrap, make sure that thread is behind the back of the needle. You can hold it here with your thumb as it goes through. I'm not having any problem with this thread today because I put wax on it. So I'm going to continue down to the end and show you how to do those corners. Okay, so well, I didn't make sure that was behind, but if that happens, you can just do what I said, what I was going to do, because I didn't make sure that thread was behind the back of my needle. Just, just put your needle through the loop and pull up, and you can still finish off your stitch. So I'm going to now come from this spot and go to the corner here, and I'm going to come up on the opposite side of this stitch. So I'm going to go like that. Make sure that my thread is on the other side of the needle and I'm going to put that stitch right there in the corner. Okay, so now I'm going to put one here and I'm going to come up that same spot over here. Make sure my thread is behind the needle. And I'm going to come up there. So that's the middle. And then you can start on your other side. I'm going to go ahead and put it like that. And then I'm going to make sure that my stitches line up this side to the other side, like that. Okay, so we went all the way down to the, and I went to the corner, I came up through here, down, middle, the other corner. And now this side, I'm just going to line up my stitches. And like I said, if I if I was going to, and which is most people do, most people have sewing machines that make buttonholes. But if you happen to be in a spot and you need to do one by hand, this is good to know. So, you know, you can always put your stitches really close together like that or even closer. And what happens is it creates a finished edge. Let me show you this one that I did the other day. So I did the same large spacing so it was easy to see. But if I fold it like that, you can see that it has finished off that edge. So you don't have a raw edge. So if you do the stitches even closer together, you're going to have an even more finished edge, which is what you get on a manufacturer made garment. So obviously this is not the right button for this hole, but you can see that I don't have any problem getting this button through here with the threads coming loose because it's finished off with that thread on the top there. 
Well, I hope this tutorial on how to hand sew a buttonhole was helpful for you. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up below and then make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any of my new videos. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Also, make sure to visit my website, SewCraftyNotions.com, and you can receive deep discounts on sewing and crafting supplies and then other really cool stuff. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I'll see you next time, and may your bobbin always be full.